ഹലോ ഹായ് ഇറ്റ്സ് മീ ബഷീർ അസിസ്റ്റൻറ്റ് പ്രൊഫസർ എക്കണോമിക്സ് കൽപ്പറ്റ ഗവൺമെൻറ് കോളേജ് ടുഡേ ഐ ആം ഹിയർ ഓൺ ഇക്കോൺ ടു വിത്ത് യു അനദർ ടോപ്പിക് ഫ്രോം ഇൻ്റർനാഷണൽ ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് ദി ഫാക്ടർ ഇൻറ്റൻസിറ്റി റിവേഴ്സൽ ദിസ് ടോപ്പിക് മേ ബി ഫൈൻഡ് യൂസ്ഫുൾ ഫോർ എനി വൺ ഡൂയിങ് ദർ മാസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് ദ വൺ ഹു പ്രിപ്പയർ ഫോർ വേരിയസ് കോമ്പറ്റേറ്റീവ് എക്സാംസ് റിലേറ്റഡ് ടു ദി സബ്ജെക്ട് ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു ദി വീഡിയോ now coming back to the topic you know one of the important assumption crucial to the hector oil in conclusion is that the production function are different for different commodities but these are identical for each commodities in the two countries we can understand this assumption with an example suppose that there are two commodities x and y here x is a capital intensive commodity or a high capital labor ratio commodity and y is a labor intensive commodity or a low capital labor ratio commodity but x remains capital intensive in both the countries and y remains labor intensive in both the countries or this assumption is also known as strong factor intensity assumption without this assumption the hector oil in model cannot always accurately predict the structure of the trade and even if the technology is same or production function is same between two countries so if this assumption is not fulfilled and the same commodity which is capital intensive in one country and the labor intensive in the another country hence the hco theory will break down in such situation and you can see that lentif paradox can be applied to any one of the two countries so what we are going to see in this video is that we will understand what is factor intensity reversal both in theoretical sense of the term as well as graphical illustration now before going into the detail of graphical illustration of the factor intensity reversal let us briefly touch upon what is the meaning of factor intensity reversal and why and how it is occur like that the factor intensity reversal refers to the phenomena or a situation where you can see that a given commodity a particular commodity which is the labor intensive commodity in the labor abundant nation and the capital intensive commodity in the capital abundant nation we can see one example here like factor intensity reversal is present if commodity x is labor intensive commodity in the nation 1 that is the low wage nation and at the same time it is the capital intensive commodity in the nation 2 that is the high wage nation now when and why factor intensity reversal occurs to understand that we will use the concept of elasticity of substitution or factors in production the elasticity of substitution measures the degree with which one factor can be substituted for another in production as the relative price of the factor declines for example suppose the elasticity of substitution of labor and capital is much greater in the production of commodity x than in the production of commodity y this means that it is much easier to substitute labor for capital or vice versa in the production of commodity x than in the production of commodity y now the factor intensity reversal is more likely to occur in the production of the two commodities if the greater is the difference in the elasticity of substitution of labor for capital with a large elasticity of substitution of labor for capital in the production of commodity x nation 1 will produce commodity x with labor intensive techniques because its wages are low on the other hand nation 2 will produce commodity x with capital intensive techniques because its wages are high so if at the same time the elasticity of substitution of labor for capital is very low in the production of commodity y 
the two nations will be forced to use similar technique in producing commodity why even though the relative price may be differ greatly so as a result commodity x will be labor intensive commodity in nation 1 and the capital intensive commodity in the nation 2 and hence we will have the case of factor intensity reversal now as i said earlier one of the crucial assumption of the ho theorem is that there is no factor intensity reversal or the production functions are same in both countries but they are different for different commodities the other way in which you can say the same assumption is by saying i so can't will cut only once so we will have a situation of no factor intensity reversal when isocon only cut once but if the factor intensity reversal existed we will have a situation that we can depict with the help of following figures in this figure we have two sets of isocon one set of isocon represent the production of for example wheat denoted by w and other isocon represent the production of cloth which is denoted by c now we can see in this figure that the wheat isocon that is w cuts the cloth isocon that is c at two times as both these isocons are each members of families of isocons each member having the same shape that we can find another isocon such as w1 which at some point is tangent to the cloth isocon c this happens at point r if the factor price ratio is represented by the line pp that is tangent to the two isocon at r then r is the equilibrium point and the factor intensity in both line of production is or now out of many factor price ratios there is only one that gives the same factor intensity in both lines of production if labor were more expensive then how would labor and capital be combined so to answer that we have this figure in figure we have the same cloth isocon cc and the same wheat isocon w1 w1 as that we have in the previous figure with a common point of tangency at r now if labor becomes more expensive than in our first example that is in figure 1 the factor price line will become more steeper that is the factor price ratio p1 p1 and p-1 p-1 of course these two lines are parallel will illustrate this case so we know that both lines will use more capital intensive methods of production as labor becomes relatively more expensive so the factor intensity used in wheat will be os and in cloth it will be os dash thus at this factor price ratio cloth will be the capital intensive good and wheat will be the labor intensive good by same reasoning we find that at all factor price ratios where labor is relatively more expensive than at pp as in first figure cloth will be the capital intensive good and wheat will be the labor intensive good now but what happens if labor is relatively cheaper than at the ratio pp this case is also illustrated in the second figure here the factor price ratio has to be less steep than pp here an example is p2 p2 and p-2 p-2 again they are parallel and we can find that the factor intensity is ot in wheat production and ot dash in the case of cloth production the wheat is now the capital intensive line of production and cloth the labor intensive good again by same reasoning we can find at any factor price ratio where capital is relatively more expensive than at pp wheat is capital intensive and cloth is labor intensive now from this it follows that 
there is no longer a one to one correspondence between factor prices and factor intensities so whether cloth is the labor intensive good or the capital intensive good will depend on which factor price ratio is existing at present now the economic meaning of the fact that isocon cut ties or there is no factor intensity reversal is that possibility of substitution differs significantly between the two industries this both situation can be depicted in this two figure where we can find that the wheat isocon is more convex to the origin than is the cloth isocon it means the two factors of production are better substitute for each other in the cloth production than in wheat production this is a fact derived from the shape of the production functions so with any change in factor prices the two industries will substitute the relatively cheap factor for the more expensive one but their possibilities of doing this in a profitable way depends on technological factors now let us assume first of all that the factor price ratio pp is the ruling one or the existing one and hence or is the factor intensity in both lines of production so if factor prices change and labor becomes more expensive capital will be substituted for labor but this is more easily done in case of cloth than in wheat production therefore cloth will be more capital intensive than wheat in the same way if capital becomes more expensive related to labor labor will be substituted for capital but as this still is more easily done in cloth than in wheat production cloth will become labor intensive so from this it follows that the new equilibrium factor intensity ray in wheat will be closer to the ray or than the new equilibrium factor intensity ray in cloth regardless of the way the factor prices changes related to the ratio pp now let us sum up the entire discussion on factor intensity reversal what we have done in this video is that we have understood the meaning of factor intensity reversal and how and why does the factor intensity reversal exist and what is the implication of factor intensity reversal on the ho theorem now in brief factor intensity reversal refers to the situation where a commodity is labor intensive in the labor abundant nation and capital intensive in the capital abundant nation this may occur when the elasticity of substitution of factors in production changes greatly for the two commodities so with the factor intensity reversal its o theorem will be break down so this is all about the factor intensity reversal and its related aspect i hope that you have understood the concept Okay thank you thank you for watching have a nice day okay